Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about a great news and that is uh, related to DxO and uh, their raw converter, the DxO Optics Pro. Uh, probably if you follow my channel you know that I use DxO Optics Pro and I like DxO Optics Pro uh, for uh, some obvious reasons and I have a few video about uh, these reasons why I use and why I like DxO Optics Pro. And now I have great news. Um, probably you know if you are into photography world, then uh, they so purchased Nick Collection from Google. And that is really, really good because I used to use Nick Collection, Google Nick Collection in Photoshop uh, as a plugin and even in Topaz, uh, sorry, not in Topaz, in Zoner, in Zoner uh, Photo Studio, I used to use Nick Collection as a plugin and uh, I like Nick Collection. And now they so purchased Nick Collection. And what they did, they combined Nick Collection with DxO Optics Pro and they made a new software called DxO Photolab. Now, this is a great news and I tell you why. Because uh, finally, this software has local adjustment possibilities. What does is, what is, uh, that mean? Until now in DxO, if you wanted to change uh, something in micro contrast or saturation or whatever you changed that affected the whole picture. You couldn't change locally on your face, on your chest, on your side, whatever. You know, you couldn't change, you couldn't just select an area. You didn't have brush options. You didn't have that. And uh, that was in Nick Collection. And that's why I used to use Nick Collection as a plugin. Now, Finally, they introduced in, in the Photo Photolab and it has now brush possibilities and it has, it has local area adjustment possibilities. This was one of the biggest disadvantage of DxO Optics Pro until now. And I have to tell you that uh, uh, this was such a big disadvantage that I'm, sometimes I was kind of uh, uncomfortable, you know, because I, when I opened the file in the X Optics Pro, I started to use it and I had to go in Nick Collection and use it, uh, fix it over there, the local adjustments, then come back in the XO and it was just a mess. But now this, it's great. And I tell you something, because of this, many, many photographers, I would say, they will start using seriously the XO Photolove. But, there is a complaint I have to say, and unfortunately, although I like the XO very much, these, uh, actually there are two complaints, and these two complaints are pretty big. Now, one of the complaints is that the DxO is not supporting Fuji files. Okay, um, if you ring them, or if you read about this, on internet everywhere they will say that well yeah you know um, uh, Fujifilm sensors are different because they are a different type of sensor they are not CMOS sensors and uh, uh, blah 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 and that's why it's not possible so they uh, they cannot use it and they cannot support it I tell you something why Zoner Photo Studio supports uh, Fujifilm files why Lightroom supports Fujifilm files? Why sometimes even smaller converters, some smaller companies, you know, they support, like Topaz, they support Fujifilm files. Why? And DxO doesn't support. I don't think that that is the biggest problem. I think that the biggest problem is that uh, Fujifilm decided not to support DxO, and uh, financially, I mean. And that's why they don't do any tests, you know, for the lenses. If you look at the XO mark on, this, on, the, on the website, you will realize that there are no Fuji lenses, there are no Fuji cameras over there. No test was done with any of Fuji cameras. And this is the reason why they don't uh, support Fuji files. I think that it, this is my opinion, I would say. So I don't, uh, don't jump on it, you know, and argue with it. Look, this is my opinion. I think that it's everything is about money. And because they don't get support from Fuji, they don't do it. Fair enough, I don't know. But this way, a lot of photographers will, um, will go away, you know, and try other uh, raw converters because if they don't support, you know, that's the, that's the reason uh, I'm thinking, you know, because at the moment I use Nikon cameras and Fuji cameras. So I can, I can edit the Nikon files on DxO, but I cannot ed edit the Fuji files. 
So I don't know. I'm thinking to go on Topaz or, or, or maybe back on Lightroom. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, this is the first complaint. The second complaint is, and uh, this is a bigger complaint, and that is that uh, DxO does not support newer cameras. And even when they start supporting newer cameras, they will not give a software update for the older version of softwares. I tell you an example. I used to, uh, to uh, edit photos from Nikon and from Sony and all these cameras, they were supported in DxO, no problem. And then I purchased uh, the Panasonic FZ2000-2500. Now, that camera was pretty new on the market when I purchased. And uh, because it was so new on the market, when I downloaded the photos I did with the camera and I wanted to upload in, uh, in DxO and to edit them, it wasn't supported. So, okay, I said, okay, the camera is pretty new, you know, so probably that's why I wait a month or two and maybe they will start supporting. Interestingly, those pictures were already supported, like I said, in Zoner Photo Studio. It was supported in, uh, in uh, Lightroom, it was supported in uh, Topaz and so on and so on. But anyway, I waited like one or two months and uh, I see that it's still not supported. So I take a phone and I ring. And I asked the guy, you know, look, I purchased this new Panasonic camera and I see that it's not supported. What's going on? Could you tell me an exa uh, sorry, uh, what, what should I do? Some information, what should I do? How can I get my, uh, my raw files supported? And he told me, unfortunately, uh, we don't have software update for the older versions. And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, uh, you have the XO, uh, the XO Optics Pro 10. I used to use that time. And he said, we already we support the Panasonic files in DX Optics Pro 11, but not in 10. I mean, what do you mean? So now I have to purchase the DX Optics Pro 11 if I want to use Panasonic files. And he said, yes. And I was like, that's not nice. I mean, I purchased this software. I'm happy with it. Why should I buy the new one? You should, you should just give a software update and that's it, you know? No, they said, no, 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 it's not supported. So. If you want to get the newer cameras supported, you have to buy always the newer software. And that's not nice. That's really not professional. I think that this is a, this is a bad move from DxO, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, obviously I didn't buy. I said, look, if you don't want to support it, that's okay, I will have it in Zoner. So I just uh, finished and that's it. I didn't buy the software just because of uh, principles. I mean, I don't like to get robbed. And when I feel that I get robbed, you know, I will just stop doing it. And that's it. I just said I'm done. I will not, uh, I will not accept this. But this is the, the two things that I'm uh, a little bit uh, concerned about uh, DxO, you know. Other than that, this is a, a great raw converter. And I think, in my opinion, that now, because they introduced from Nick Collection these new features, it will be excellent. But you have to be prepared, again, that if you buy a new camera, like you will buy the Sony A7R Mark III, now probably the files will not be supported. I don't know, maybe they will be, I don't know. But uh, this, anytime when you buy a new camera, you have to be ready. Or Nikon D850, maybe the files are not supported. So, okay. I just wanted to share you share uh, with you this guys and I hope that you like this video. If you think that I left out something please feel free and leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to add something to this video feel free and leave a comment down below. Other than that I wish you a really nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys.